Welcome one and all to another edition of the Default Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. Hurricane season is here. The rains seem to be a very sporadic but very strong right now. That can do damage to your home or your office. No worries. Water Cleanup of Florida will take care of any fire or water damage just like that. Just call them 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 954-579-0356. Mike, George, Robert, their entire team has well over 60 years of combined experience, and they will not only fix whatever issues ail you, but they'll make it look brand new because of the certified, insured, uh, tremendous contractors that will not only help get the job done, but will make it look brand new. Again, 954-579-0356 for Water Cleanup of Florida. Check them out on their website, wcufl.com, and check them out on the socials at Water Cleanup FL+. Plus, with over 85 star reviews on Google. You don't have to take my word for it. You can take other people who have worked and had Water Cleanup Florida do great things for them. They did it for my wife and I in our, in our former home. They'll do it for you. Again, 954-579-0356. You have the schmutz. They have the guts. Water Cleanup of Florida. My meat have shown lots and lots of guts throughout this playoff run. Florida Panthers had shown tons of guts until the Stanley Cup Finals where they've sort of fallen on their face. We talked about both finals runs for the South Florida NBA and NHL franchises with the one and only Dave Hyde here on the Default Show with the Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. One of the uh, great sports journalists of all time, if we can uh, do a little Don King uh, intro into this thing, of all time. And uh, currently, I mean, just bopping back and forth between two sensational stories the Miami Heat and the Florida Panthers, both involved in their championship rounds of their respective sports. We welcome to the show from the uh, South Florida Sun Sentinel, their esteemed columnist, Mr. David Hyde. Dave, how are you, my friend? I'm, I'm feeling a little like the cooler. You know, I, did, I went out to Vegas <laughs> with the Panthers, and uh, look what happened. Look what happened to them. My first road trips with them, and, and, and they lose twice on the road. Uh, for the first time, these playoffs, and and so I'm, I'm, it's me, it's me, Defoe. Put it all on me. I, I don't want to do that to, to you, Dave, because I, I think you're a good luck charm for around the local teams here. I, I believe that uh, when, when you're on the uh, you know the, on the beat, there's a good chance there's going to be some success. All right, uh, Luby's very optimistic about the Miami Heat. I, I, I think uh, you know that kind of like this uh, golf story. I, I don't know that it came out of nowhere, but uh, you know the, the victory in game number two. Uh, down eight points going into the fourth quarter, uh, where uh, and the stat what was kind of startling. Uh, Denver had been uh, thirty-two and one or something like that, uh, right along that number, uh, in, in spots where they were leading going to the fourth quarter this season and in the postseason. They had only lost one game, uh, you know, and who knows? I mean, the lead could have been marginal, like one point. But uh, you know, they, they pour it on uh, on Denver in the fourth quarter. Is that enough to convince you? That uh, they can they can maybe win both games at home and really take command of the series. Well, I, I mean, I don't need convincing that the Heat are going to come at you and come at you and come at you. Uh, you know, for four quarters, whether they're down what they were in Game One, whatever that was, and, and, and they still were playing hard, and they made they brought two eight points, I think, for fourth quarter, um, or. Uh, going into the, the, the previous, what they hit their first 11 shots. Is that right? Now I wasn't at the Amazing game. Shooting. I was yeah. It was crazy what they did. And, um, um, <laughs> this was just a, this is a great team. I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's a, such a rare team in the NBA. You know, that the, you look at how NBA teams are built and champions are built. It's such a unique team that a lot of people just don't aren't seeing that what a great story it is. It's a phenomenal story of, uh, I, I call it a team of Spolstras, a team of guys who were, who started in the video room and, and worked their way up through hard work and talent and, and taking advantage of opportunities. Now Spolstra is the best in the game. And, and you look at across the roster, there's, all these undrafted guys that uh, work their way up from the video room, and here they are, and, and uh, it, it, it's a great story. And so, um, you know, nobody across the NBA gave a chance of, of you know, there. Were, I, I was shocked. I was out in Vegas, and I think forty percent of the bets I read were on a Vegas or on a Denver sweep. 
on a Vegas wow. sweeps, Vegas sweeps everything. But no, on, on, a, on a Denver sweep this series. And um, uh, so, again, the Heat were – you look at the rosters just like you did the Boston series, the Milwaukee series, and say they got no shot. And and yet, that if you watch the team play and watch, you know, the, the hard manner they play and the way they play together and the way they can play different games, you know, zone, they, they – um, and you know you got different stars coming at you every night. Duncan Robinson has ten points in the fourth quarter. Um, so um, can they sweep Denver? I, I mean, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, all, all I know is I'm not discounting the, what the Heat can do. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think you can at this stage. Although uh, Denver uh, goes in tonight, a slight favorite, two and a half points. Uh, it's interesting because uh, we were trying to figure out if it was genius on the part of Eric Spolster or blind luck mm. that some of these things came about. Where I mean, I'm thinking, Dave, all season long, Pat Riley had to spend most of his time on the phone to the point where GMs weren't even taking his calls anymore. Mm. Where the secretary go, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's Pat on line two, Riley. And they go, no, nah, no, nah, tell him I'm out. Because uh, <laughs> he was probably trying to unload Duncan Robinson and Kyle Lowry along with Deadman, who we finally did get rid of. But, uh, I mean, th- these were two guys that looked like uh, just horrendous Dion Waiters-type contract losses uh, for the team. And now they're both instrumental in what's going on here, including, you know, a very integral at uh, two different stages of that game uh, where Lowry hit a couple of shots in the second quarter that were key. And then Robinson uh, brought him right back into the game from eight down immediately in the fourth quarter where they eventually seized control. Th- th- these were guys that they wanted to cast away, like Tom Hanks. You know, it's fascinating, the Duncan Robinson story to me. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to him before, before the playoffs about his development, and he said when he first came to the Heat from the you know the developmental league, before games he would sit on the bench, go to the scorer's table as if he was checking. And this is during warm-ups of, of, of games. He'd go to the scorer's tables of checking, come in, and they'd run a play you know, uh, imaginary play for him. And he'd shoot from the, you know, he'd come off a break and catch the ball, pass from an assistant coach and, and shoot. And if the ball went in, then it, they'd run a next play and he'd keep going. And if he'd miss, he'd go back to the bench and repeat the process all over. And the, and the idea obviously is to simulate what's going to happen to him when he comes into a game. Now, you hear, you know, that, that he turned into a great three point shooter. We all know the contract and all that stuff. But, but look what he did to Denver the other night. He's driving to the basket. He, he's, he's developed, and you've seen it all playoffs here when, when really he got his chance because Tyler Hero was hurt. Tyler Hero isn't hurt. I, I'm not even sure we hear from Duncan Robinson these playoffs. Um, and, but you see how he's worked on his game. To, to the point, he, he's driving hard to the basket, scoring contested layups, things that he c- couldn't do uh, a couple years ago. And so it's, it's fascinating to me that, that the way a player develops a game, you know, the, the, the biggest example to me in the, in the heat is, is LeBron James. When he came here, they play in the finals against Dallas. He has no um, inside game. To the point that Dallas was covering him with that, you know, five nine guard, and he couldn't take the guy inside. And, and, and so that off season, he went and developed an inside game. And I mean, it's hard to imagine that LeBron didn't have an inside game. I remember sitting there watching those um, finals, um, thinking, how can how can he just not take this guy inside? But he didn't know he didn't know how to play with his back to the basket like that. So, anyways. Um, um, yeah, you know, Lowry's a, a bit of a shock. Uh, you really don't know what you're getting with him. Um, but, you know, and now there's, I guess Hero wasn't cleared for to come back. I'm not really sure what he I, I don't do think he's playing point, tonight. Really. He's yeah. not. No, he's not. Yeah. He is playing tonight. Okay. No, he's, no, he's uh, not. He's not. He's, I think, been officially yeah, ruled last, out. Yeah. That's why I last heard. So, yeah. but who knows? That, that could, that could, I, I, I've seen. This could turn on a dime if if he all of a sudden he's cleared. You know, and who who knows what if the Heat are playing games or if they're they're being right at this point. Um, uh, the the question is what can he bring really at at, at this point um, beyond uh, 
some minutes, you know, five, ten minutes a game, which might help rest somebody. But um, look, Spolster is doing it. Uh, Spolster just flat out coached Joe Mazzulla a couple in a couple games in the Boston series, which which um, you know just doesn't happen in the NBA like that. And and you know he. They need, you know, the way he's thrown the zone at at uh, Jokic, and, and you know, one game he, he they're making Jokic read the game now, and, and and really they're winning to me at the offensive end. Though they got outscored Denver, and then they were, they they were hitting shots as you said, Lowry and Robinson. I, I don't know what magic pills they gave them, but uh, it's working <laughs> right now. And uh, you know, it, it once again gives uh, you know credence to our adage, which is. Uh, you know, the ultimate essence in terms of basketball analysis, he who makes shot win game. So, uh, you know, they, they ended up winning that thing. And uh, they still had to hang on by a thread there against a, a game Denver team, uh, which uh, seemed like they, they kind of went to sleep a little bit beginning of the fourth quarter. And, and then in a total uh, Reggie Miller-like act of desperation, uh, got, got back from 11 down in, in, you know, like a minute and change and had a shot to uh, – Take it to overtime at the end. Dave, uh, always a pleasure, my friend. Will you be uh, out there tonight at, at the uh, Heat Denver matchup? I will be. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, we haven't had a game in town since the big three left because the, the Heat were in the bubble in Orlando yeah. last time. And then, the, and then the Panthers haven't played a championship. So for the next four nights, we got championship games in town. So. But, uh, you know, we talked about this, and I've experienced it many, many times. Luby, uh, to a far lesser extent, uh, I, I think he actually had a good time. The uh, He's only been out to Vegas a couple of times. But uh, the the two-night, three-day stay in Las Vegas, I, I find particularly devastating. And, and, <laughs> and that's what the Panthers were facing more so than anything else. Did you see any of the boys out on the town? I don't know what kind of, uh, you know... Uh, Revelry, uh, you were involved in, but uh, let, let's face it, there are no clocks there. And you know, how many times have you been in Vegas and said, "Oh, geez, it's already six a.m." <laughs> think I'll catch a little shut eye, then go down and get the breakfast buffet. <laughs> but, uh, oh but what do you think? I mean, I, what happened here? We said well, that Nick I, Cage left off at Las Vegas in better shape in the movie. Yeah, I, I you know, I didn't even know Wayne Newton was still alive, but I went out with him. You know, <laughs> 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 Neither did we, man. We had him. Uh, we had him buried a long time ago. He he showed up. He showed up at, at the second game. He was there. Yeah. This, uh, you know, like the Panthers beat the drum before a game. Uh, they do like this. Uh, the know, siren. Yeah, the siren. There you go. And um, so Wayne Newton was 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 doing the siren, and I was like, "Well, oh, he's alive." Huh? I, I was sure. <laughs> So uh, things you learn on a trip to Vegas, you know. Did you get a good look at that face, though? I mean, uh, it was very prominent on the television screen. I mean, I, I didn't know what to compare it to, except maybe the first time you put on a condom. <laughs> it was like, oh, my God. That thing was really stretched out, Dave. I mean, uh, it, was that somewhat horrifying when you saw how he looked? I mean, I, I, in an I effort to look more, young. Yeah, I was thinking more of like a... Uh, Somebody, you know, making a a forged Van Gogh, you know, where the paint is, you know, yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. it looks like it, right. it looks like what you remember, but it's not exactly it, you know. <laughs> uh, the canvas, no, this could not have been around at that time in Italy. Yeah, whatever. I mean, uh, yeah, that that was pretty wild. All right, so uh, what happened here? Um, you know, uh, Luby uh, wants to attribute it to the layoff and, and the fact that uh, during that layoff, apparently uh, somebody did, uh, you know, uh, mess with uh, Bobrovsky's eyesight. Uh, it did seem to me, I mean, uh, you know, we haven't seen this happen through uh, the playoffs, e even in the uh, Boston series when they were down 3-1, the Panthers. Uh, it wasn't like they were being outclassed or outworked and, and certainly not out hustled. And, and yet it, it did seem that way in game two, much more so than even in game one that the Panthers were just being beaten, uh, you know, at every turn, that they were literally, uh, you know, a, a tick behind there, a step slow. Yeah, they, um, you know, we're not, we're not into the, they turned to a pumpkin stage um, yeah. from the first three series or, you know, really the, the, this mimics Boston a little, if you want to be optimistic and, uh, um, 
they looked down and out in Boston and, and came back. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, they, they, you know, it, it is the rush game as, as they say in hockey, the, the rush game of Vegas, you know, the, them coming up the ice and full force and the, the, you know, I, I, we're, we're getting to a point with the Panthers with, with bodies too, because Raiko Gudis looks like, uh, I mean, all signs point to a concussion from him. The way he well, was he the guy that went flying over somebody at, uh, I guess it was, uh, the, you know, the defensive end of the ice or whatever, and he was coming out of his own there. It, it was sort of off to the side on the uh, television screen. I barely caught it. And, I, and it looked like a guy who, like got catapulted, like, you know, he was in a car crash at Indy. But was that Gudis? Uh, was that that hit? Yeah, well, he, he went to hit somebody, and they uh... – put an elbow to his head and uh okay. he went down and, and uh and so you know there were a lot of big hits in that game i I'm, yes the hit of kachuk on jack eichel was uh wow uh, the, the echo is still going on if you step outside from that one that was a massive. yes um so you know very physical game and and um uh, but vegas vegas uh you know the the, the panthers defense you know, was in tatters by the end of that game, and, and you know when it, when they have had trouble this this series, the, these playoffs, uh, Bobrovsky has saved them with miracle saves or momentous saves, however you want to put it. And um, uh, he wasn't doing that this game when the defense fell apart, and and so that's how you end up with seven goals and against uh, in one night. Well, and, and, and pucks were just whizzing by his ears, uh, and it was it was really strange to see because he had been, as you said, Dave, by uh, you know sensational before that, and you know that that was Luby's big problem uh, with it. Uh, you know, uh, when was Bobrovsky going to uh, you know possibly revert back to being Bobrovsky? And uh, you know, maybe there was something to be said for uh, you know getting out of rhythm there and and, and not playing for uh, nine days, which. I, I don't know. I think by game yeah. two, you know, I, I wouldn't have used that uh, as a reason for the uh, poor performance there in the second game. All right. So, uh, you know, how does it turn around here? Uh, we have, uh, what, uh, Thursday night for a uh, game three, and, and that's going to be here. Um, you would think that, the, you know, the home crowd, uh, they, they had about uh, Mike Mayo was actually out there for, uh, you know, the uh, performance in front of nobody. And, you know, the, the arena was uh, relatively full. Uh, I would imagine, you know, that that will be uh, turned up exponentially, the uh, excitement quotient, uh, with actually a live game. Uh, so um, what, what do you think? Can the Panthers turn this around uh, and and do it with Bobrovsky still maybe needing a blindfold and the last drag of a cigarette? No, not if Bobrovsky is, uh, uh, and again, it, it, I'm not pinning the blame on him. Um, the defense fell That's apart nice. and, and Vegas, um, give Vegas credit. They're, uh, they're they four hustle. lines yeah. of uh, power, you know, coming at you, and and they're big defense that that uh, you know, blocks a lot of shots. Um, so can, can yeah, they can turn around just from the fact that they have turned around. Man, look at the Boston series, uh, down three one, and um, came back and won that one. So and the way they dominated the the next two series shows you that game's in them. They, they just have to get to that game right away. I mean, there, there's no room for error here. You go 3-0 and it's, and that's, you know, all the comparisons to the 96 team stand up. Uh, the 96 team got swept and you, you lose uh, Thursday night and that's what you're staring at. So, uh, but yeah, they can come back. They've, they've uh, showed the ability to do it, have the talent. Um, the, the thing you fear um as much as uh, – and I agree with Luby, the, the you know, Bobrovsky was locked in, and that was one of the fears of the layoff is, is uh, do you lose that? Um, you know, it's almost like you would like to play the next night, not take nine days off. Um, but, um, you know, you, the, the thing you fear a little is is if Gudis is out, they're, they're, Mahura looked at her, her, you know, something was going on there, I don't know what. Um, and so are they going to run out of bodies there at some point? All right. Um, uh, I mean, how much would this document be worth if you had the, uh, you know, uh, expansion list that Dale Talon left with the league <laughs> and, and it was six years ago and there's Jonathan Marcia's oh, name on the list. 
And you're thinking that had to be a mistake. What what happened there? I kind of like uh, what was it? Anthony Carter's agent when he uh, you know failed to uh, send in the uh, option that they were going to pick up, and yeah. it was yeah. like a half yeah. a second past uh, twelve, and uh, Riley immediately negated the contract, uh, and they got rid of the guy. Uh, I mean, uh, w- what kind of question could you possibly have posed to Dale Talon about uh, that at the time? Because uh, and Marcia so was a thirty goal scorer the year before uh, or that season, and. Uh, you know, how dumb should I feel, Dave Hyde, that I didn't take him to be the Conn Smythe winner as MVP of the uh, playoffs uh, when, when he's got 12 goals in the last 12 games? And it was about, I think he was 12 to 1 to win the trophy. Really? Yeah. You, who'd you take, Kachuk or uh, Bobrovsky, right? I, I, I ended up passing uh, on it, but, but I, I was thinking, you know what? The, the irony, you know, I mean, you, you love uh, stories, and obviously uh, when they're laced with ironies, you know, it makes it uh, even easier to write about. I mean, how, how delicious is this for Marcia? So that, uh, you know, a team that let him go in the expansion draft after a big season, you know, and now maybe six years later uh, in, in his second trip to the Stanley cup finals uh, with this new team, uh, he, he does them in. That just fits into the 25 year debacle that were the Panthers, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's uh, an exclamation column, point. You're right. I, I did a column on this last week that you know, you know, to appreciate the Panthers, you have to look at all the all the dumb things they've done. And, <laughs> and from, yeah, you know, they tried to take, they had the number one pick overall, Alex Ovechkin is, is they want Alex Ovechkin. Um, there's only one problem. He's not draft eligible that year. He's born oh. two days too early. Oh my so the God. Panthers the, the, argue loudly to the league that with leap years, he has 40 leap years, he's really <laughs> okay. That's funny. That's now, a good this one. This is just unbelievable to even – I had to remember all this story. They actually literally – to the point – Rick Dudley went up with the card of Ovechkin in his hand for the number one pick. The league talked him down, told him no. Alan Cohen, the owner, is behind it all, and 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 and, and they're still pounding the table for Ovechkin. With the ninth, when it got to the ninth round, they tried to take him again, and the league turned off the <laughs> microphone. The league turned off the Panthers' microphone, so they could not. Shut well, off his mic. Uh, yeah, I've, then, I've been in that spot. Then there was the time they uh, they instituted a knowing, the, or excuse me, a English only rule in the locker room that oh, everybody nice. had to speak in English because they had you know guys from different countries and they were afraid of factions. And then they go out and take uh, a guy from Ukraine. I can't think of his first name. Where's last Dennis Dennis Schwitke. Schwitke is default. Schwitke is my favorite Schwitke. player. I still have Schwitke. a thousand Schwitke jerseys that I'm selling Schwitke. online. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. He's but He's going to be a big star. That's what default always says. It can't be that name, but it is. And he didn't <laughs> speak a word of English. He didn't speak a word of English. So, you know, I mean. His uh, name wasn't so even so spelled anyway, in English, Schwitke. What the hell? How did you spell that? There's a million, there's a million stories like that. Oh, and oh. and uh, Marsha so. Marcia so fixed it fits right into it that oh my god um, here's a guy, this... he had a breakout now he did have a 30 goal season but it was his breakout season so you know he, he hadn't really done any he was just coming up he played two a couple you know big years with in Tampa I believe then yeah. the Panthers got him he had a big year and and I guess they weren't believers of that or um but you know that's one they like bad. They, they they let Riley Smith go to, to Vegas too, and yes. he really it was a contract dump. They traded him with somebody else's. Can't think of the guy. Someone with a bad contract for the rights and, to Schmitke. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably by then. I think Schmitke played two games <laughs> total. So I can't um, say Schmitke enough. Uh, I mean, I try to work him into every show somewhere. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad you brought him up, here. Dave. <laughs> Hey, we love you, man. And uh, yeah, he's right. Championship games in town for the next uh, four uh, what? Four games? Is yes. it four straight nights? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think. It is. Yeah, I, alternating I, I nights. Don't. Are you kidding me? The rest of the way? Yeah, I think it's alternating nights because they've already done their traveling. I think it's it's the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Always enjoy talking to Dave Hyde, uh, if not the preeminent, one of the preeminent sports writers in all of South Florida and all of the country. Been covering South Florida sports for over thirty years. 
does a great job. It is covering both the Miami Heat and the Florida Panthers. Runs to the finals. Miami Heat tonight look to take a 2-1 lead in their series. The Panthers tomorrow night look to get back in that series after an abysmal third period in game one and a horrendous entire game two. We shall see what happens here in the South Florida skyline, the South Florida Knights. Check us out each and every morning on D415 on the 5 Reasons Sports Network. Also, South Florida Live will do an entire show, 7 to 9. The Defo Show with Luby on South Florida Live. So please subscribe to that on YouTube. We'd love to have you there. Also, Mike Mayo's Lunchbox uh, is every day from at 12 to 1. So you can check out both our show and Mayo's show on South Florida Live here on YouTube. And you can check us out on our national podcast, The Believe Network, BLEAV.com. Search after hours. Today, we talked with Melissa Gilbert. Yes, from Little House on the Prairie, turned best selling author. Really fun conversation. Check that out. The Believe Network again, BLEAV.com. Search after hours and check us out here with our South Florida content, The Devo Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Hey, folks, Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously, friendly atmosphere, not too loud, but good energy, reasonable prices, and a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, <laughs> no pun meant there, are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes. Really, really good food, amazing atmosphere, good for a family, good for a date, or just a night out for yourself, and prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched, steaks hand cut every day, everything, and I mean everything is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low-carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation, because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup, all you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have... They're amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar, and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. 